Hello everyone, good morning, welcome to Reiki Radio. I am your host, Yolanda, and it is day two of our fool's journey through the major arcana of tarot. So yesterday we began this journey with the fool, and I am going to blog about my experiences with the fool card. In fact, um, you can join us in the seeker circle if you are doing this journey of uh, exploration with me. Be sure to join us in the seeker circle to share your experiences. I was very excited this morning to wake up to some messages there of people also joining in this exercise, we'll call it, (laughs) with me. So I can't wait to hear what comes up for all of you. And if you want to join us in the Seeker Circle, you can go to my website, uchi.com. That's Y-E-W-C-H-I.com. There is a link to get you there on the homepage if you just scroll down towards the bottom. And you want to sign up for the newsletter so you can access some other gifts that help you with your journey of transformation and awakening and all of these beautiful things. So today, like I said, we are getting into the magician. And one of the first things I want you to consider is what type of magician you are and how you are using your magic. Now, one of the things um, that I did point out yesterday is every card has an associated element as well as an associated planet. Now, I did receive an email asking me why I felt like the Fool card was um, connected to the energy of Pisces. So just let me clarify. The Fool card is represented by the element air, which is also symbolic of our thoughts. And it is also associated with the planet Uranus, which is the ruler of Aquarius. And that energy is really about freedom and rebellion, which both speak very much to the energy of the fool. What element of that card reminds me of Pisces is the sun. So I spoke to you about the um, image of the sun in the right-hand corner of that card being white and symbolic of pure consciousness. And so it reminds me of that state of awareness that we're in prior to incarnating into this lifetime. So that's what I meant, just to clarify. But today we move on to the magician, and the magician is associated with the element of Earth and also the planet Mercury. And the planet Mercury, as I'm sure a lot of you know, is all about thought and communication. And this card is very much tied to our mind, the power of the mind to be more exact. And what's interesting about this card is, unlike the fool, we can see that the magician has all of the elements laid out in front of him. Now, I mentioned to you that some people believe that the fool in his knapsack is carrying the elements of um, the other suits of the deck. So the disc, the cup, the sword, and then the wand itself is the stick on his knapsack. But if that were the case, he is not necessarily consciously aware of these gifts or tools that he has with him. They're not laid out in front of him. But On the Magician card, that's one of the first things that stands out. He has all of these elements out in front of him, consciously aware of them. Now, if you're not that familiar with tarot, as I mentioned, we are looking at the major arcana, which are considered like the trump cards. Um, But there's also the minor arcana, and there are four suits within the minor arcana And each suit is represented by one of these elements. So we have a suit of pentacles or discs. We have a suit of cups, a suit of wands, and a suit of swords. Each of these elements are also symbolic of the elements of nature. And 
the magician is all about our self mastery. So let's just look at these elements first because that's going to be a big part of our meditation today. What does the magician have laid out in front of him? So let's look at the first element. What stands out to me is the cup. And the cup is associated with the element water. And water is a symbol of our emotion. So if this card, the magician, is all about our self-mastery, we can then assume that part of his task is learning how to master his emotion. And how do we act as a magician of our emotion, right? We learn how to transform that energy. We learn how to be the ones in control of that energy, not allowing our emotions to overtake us. And I talk to you about this all the time, the importance of being observers of ourselves and not um, ignoring what we feel, but really acknowledging what comes up so that we can have more understanding and then, again, transform that energy. And that's what uh, a magician does. I mean, they're just transforming things or dissolving illusion. So there's a lot of illusion that comes with our emotion, right? Sometimes we um, act from an illusion that our feeling may feed to us, but it's only because we haven't quite examined it or mastered it. So one of the first things in this is being aware of what you feel today. Then we have the, let's look at the sword. The sword is symbolic of air. And air is a symbol of our thought. Now again, the magician is about the power of the mind. It's associated with the planet Mercury. So how are you acting as the master of the mind? Are you observing your thoughts? Are you aware of your perceptions? Are you allowing yourself to be focused on your higher consciousness? Or are you being led by ego? You know, these elements are very important, especially when we, again, consider our own self-mastery as a whole and how we are being uh, magicians or our own, like I like to call it, energetic alchemist. Okay, let's look. We also have the wand. The wand is a symbol of fire, the element of fire. And the element of fire is all about our will. So if we already are looking and observing our emotions, our thoughts, then we can also be observers of our will and have responsibility for that and the actions that we take and what we do with these powers that we have, the power of our mind, the power of our emotion. And then we look at the last element, which is the disc or the pentacle. And that is a symbol of earth. So it also is a symbol of what we create or materialize. Now, again, we look at our thoughts, our feelings, our will. All of those are directly going to impact what it is we create. You know, there's so much um, focus on the law of attraction and manifestation and all of these things. And you'll always hear that it all comes back to the power of the mind, which it really does. And it's not just about, you know, echoing affirmations over and over again. Being a real master of yourself is acknowledging what's actually there. What are your thoughts? What are your perceptions? What do you feel truthfully? Because by examining them is really the only way that you can um, impactfully transform them using your magic changing your mind. 
directing your thoughts, choosing your point of focus, acknowledging your perception, not allowing yourself to be overtaken and acting just from emotion, being the master of yourself. Now, this is work, right? I mean, this is an ongoing thing. We are constantly faced with decision all day. We are constantly, you know, thinking. (laughs) We're constantly feeling. So, you know, it is a practice that initially is very um, intentional and something that we have to learn to do very consciously. But in time, it just becomes second nature in our way of being. So again, the magician has all of this laid out in front of him. And then if we look at the position of his arms, his right hand is up and his left hand is pointing down. As above, so below. As above, your mind, your consciousness, so below what you materialize or bring into manifest Again, your self-mastery, the magician that you are, is going to have a direct impact on what it is that you are creating here in this reality. So if we look at the infinity symbol above his head, you know, we can think about um, uh, infinite possibility. We can think about it symbolizing higher consciousness and also how we are in constant connection with our higher selves. It's just a matter of, again, that self-mastery of knowing how to tune into that. How to allow ourselves to be led by, function from our higher consciousness rather than, you know, being led by ego or, you know, uh, being, again, overtaken by emotion and those types of things. So the magician is really quite powerful and very interesting and shows us just how magical we are, but how much influence we have on these journeys that we are creating and experiencing. Um, One of the things I want to point out about the disc uh, or also what's called the pentacle because a lot of people question why there's a five-pointed star on that and for some people there's some discomfort around this image because they don't know what it means but the five-pointed star is just a symbol of dominion over the powers of nature. So the top point is um, representative of spirit And the other four points each represent one of the four elements. And when we think about dominion over the powers of nature, it's not just physical nature, um, like, you know, the air, water, earth, and um, fire. It's also our human nature. Having dominion over our human nature. Again, self-mastery. So, the... Magician, if nothing else, is really a reminder or a meditation of self-observation. A reminder to really be present and aware of you today. What are you holding in mind? How are your thoughts influencing your experience and what you're creating? How uh, is your perception influencing what you experience and you create today? And your emotions as well. Now, the other thing about this card, um, very boldly, the background is yellow, just like the full card was. And as I mentioned yesterday, the yellow background reminds me a lot of alchemy, um, the golden color. But it can also be um, symbolic of intellect, again, coming right back to the mind. So the highlight of this card is really the power of the mind and the role that you play, the magician that you are in the mind itself, what you do with it. Um. What else is standing out to me in this card? You know, it's the mind is just like echoing in my mind. And just the fact that it is limitless. And again, that kind of speaks to that um, luminous gate or infinity symbol above his head. 
It's limitless. It's ever-changing. And that actually speaks to the snake around his waist. So the image of the magician is he has on this uh, robe. He has on an undergarment with a red robe over it. But he also has around his waist that symbol of the snake eating its own tail, which is a very... um, common symbol within alchemy and the snake swallowing his own tail is symbolic of life and death it is really about the cycle of creation or constant recreation which we are doing you know we've talked about this before as well we can't destroy energy we can't erase our past experiences we can't you know um, erase what we may have experienced But what we can do is change the energy around it, change how we carry it, how we perceive it. If we are in upset, we can use that energy instead of being destructive, use it in a way that is positive or supportive. So we are constantly in this process of creation, in this cycle of choice, in this process of introspection and alchemy. I mean, it's really fascinating when you really do kind of pause and tune into just how much impact and power and influence you have in this entire experience. Now, of course, we can get locked into um, our patterns. That's a choice. We can stay in, you know, our routines and whatever has been laid out for us and kind of Um, become uh, just companions of like will or destiny or whatever. But we also have this choice of um, utilizing or tuning in to the power of our mind to be our own energetic alchemist, to lift above that and to really tap into that power of our free will and to be consciously aware of what it is we are doing how we are using our magic. (laughs) Now, um, another thing about this card I don't want to overlook is it is the number one. And the number one, of course, is uh, alignment. It's that direct line between you, spirit, the universe, one, without separation, all that exists. And when you think about the mind and going beyond, you know, again, I, I tell you this too, beyond the idea of our brain, but the mind, the universal consciousness that we're all in this one field, it is infinite. And again, it is a practice of uh, honing in on how we are using that power. The mind is, I mean, it's just, it's absolutely fascinating. One quick thing that's popping in to tell you about is how I had a friend a few years ago that was having um, some challenges with work, and I asked them what their perception was, and we talked about how they were perceiving things at work. I told them to simply change their mind, and I said, how could you perceive this differently? And they did, and they had an immediate shift and change at what was happening at work (laughs) just because they changed their mind. So it's just to point out to say like we are quite amazing it's um it's amazing the power of the mind and the magician is really highlighting that for us today now another thing about this card is he is standing under roses um there are red roses above his head and one thing i'll point out uh, and i know i've mentioned this before um with tarot People who are, um, it, I would say, like deep in deep study of tarot, uh, typically will study other um, systems like hermeticism, alchemy, Kabbalah, astrology, all of these different things, because then they also understand the layers of symbolism within the cards. So I say that to say that these roses above him is also something that is referred to as sub rosa, which is just beneath the cards, I mean beneath the roses, but it represents working in secrecy or working with unseen forces. So I want you to think about that for a second. 
How are you working with unseen forces? And with everything we've talked about, you know, this card is really about learning how to work with your own magic, the power of your mind. Now that in of itself is unseen. You know, what you think and how you perceive and how you're processing your thought today. When you are in acknowledgement of your emotion today, when you are choosing how to work with what you acknowledge in thought and feeling and will today. Those are energies that are not necessarily seen by anyone else. You are the only one witnessing that. So in a way, you're working in secrecy or you're working with these unseen forces. And this card is also about concentration. So again, how are you perceiving reality? What will you create today? How will you use your magic through the power of your mind by mastering the nature of yourself? These elements, again, thought, emotion, will, coming down to what you create and materialize in your life. The magician is really quite fascinating and very full and it's Interesting, a lot of people say that the fool is evolving into the magician, but really, you know, the energy of the fool kind of dances with us throughout this entire journey because, again, there's this energy of um, openness and willingness to explore and to um, have this like freedom of mind with the fool. And so that really kind of sets us up for this energy of the magician because this card stretches us beyond what limitations we may have and which old beliefs and old teachings that may be limiting us in any way. And it points you back in to remind you that you are the one. You're the magic. You are the one shaping and crafting all of this. And your power of the mind, your use of these elements, how you uh, manipulate them, really, how you transform your own energy, the magic is you. It's funny, I didn't even make that connection to right now. I I say that all the time. (laughs) The magic is you. But the magician is proof of that. So it will be really interesting to see Um, What comes up for us today with this meditation of self-mastery, really being responsible and aware of our thoughts, our feelings, our will, and how we are consciously choosing to transform those energies or make use of those energies, how we are directing those energies. How are you using your magic today? What kind of magician are you? So again, you know, I would love to hear what comes up for you, your thoughts, your points of view. You can join us in the Seeker Circle to share anything that comes up for you. Um, You can, again, join us by going to my website, uchi.com. Scroll down on the homepage and you will have access there. And again, I will also be sharing Um, blog entries or maybe videos I don't know but I will share what has come up with me each day with each card and my personal meditation of each Um, as I'm saying that I just want to point out for some of you you may want to do this as you know at the end of each day journaling what came up for you what you experienced how the magician Um, was reflected in your life today, how the fool was reflected in your life yesterday, how those energies were mirrors for you, what those energies are teaching you about yourself. Because that's what all of this is about, teaching us about ourselves, helping us to reveal our true nature, step by step, (laughs) okay, one day at a time. So I hope that you all have a beautiful day today and remember to always journey in love.